Mark McKenna, you have um, five and a half minutes. Thank you very much, Les Cahorna. Um, this budget did little to make life easier for working families and was a disappointment in the measures it, it brought forward to deal with the housing crisis and with our health services, which are in such many, diffi in many difficulties and inadequacies. And while it was a disappointment, you know, it was so much uh, uh, probably an inevitable conclusion of the alliance that we have here between two very right wing parties in Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. While many of us could see it coming, it was still a sight to behold when we see Fianna Fáil pretending that they were not propping up in the Kenny's government and that they were pretending that they were going to produce their own budget alternative. There was a time when both Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael's finance spokespersons used to come in here and talk about Sinn Féin costings not bearing up to scrutiny. But they seem to have given up that talk now and they recognise that the people of Ireland have come to know over the past five years that when Pierce Doherty comes here to speak about budgets, that he stands up for the ordinary people of Ireland and that he is speaking that he represents fairness and common sense. That you just can't improve public services, you can't provide houses, you can't build adequate schools, you can't do any of these things and at the same time cut the taxes of the very richest in our society. And that's what this budget is continuing to do. The capital acquisitions tax cut is an example of that, where we see the people at the very top, a very small handful of people getting this cut at the same time as there isn't adequate provision put into our schools and our hospitals and our other services. The reality is that it makes common sense to invest in capital investment. Not only, it not only provides services, but it creates jobs and it puts money back into our local economy. You know, it, it was absolutely ironic to see Fianna Fáil come in with their four-page excuse for a budget document that had no figures in it at all. And what it showed to me is it showed that you know, they have at last given up the pretense that they're an independent party and have admitted that they're just here, on this occasion at least, for to prop up Fine Gael. That they're the butchers to keep Enda Kenny in his Taoiseach seat and doing exactly what they told the voters in the last election that they would not do. And all the talk has been about the centre and about holding the centre. And what holding the centre actually means when you think about it is it's about you know, making sure that the status quo is maintained, that the old traditional centre parties stay there and that they, they hold Ireland for themselves and them and theirs. And this aspect that we have in Ireland, which has developed, I suppose, over probably the last most of a century now, where politics in Ireland has become a culture of favour givers and favour seekers. And that is the kind of thing that has brought Ireland to its knees so many times. And we need to change that. But there is no sign of change of that in this budget. We see in the housing measures that have come forward, which is little more than a present. To the, to the big developers to ensure that they get a higher price for their houses. That isn't going to help. The reality is it is not going to help anyone who are starting off trying to buy a house. We see it in our health services as well, that they have been totally underfunded for years. I know both in Sligo Hospital and in our mental health services in Sligo, we have the Mental Health Commission going around doing inspections, and we have HICWA going around doing inspections. And at the end of all of it, the reality is that the service has been depleted because of the absence of staff. That's the reality. And at all of this budget, what do we see? Little or nothing given for to ensure that we get those staff replaced in those services. We also have, and has been mentioned here before, the home help services for elderly people trying to stay in their homes. That, again, has been only increased by the tiniest amount, which isn't going anywhere near the demand for the service in a growing and ageing population. They're tinkering with the waiting lists, as we mentioned by my colleague earlier on, in regard to Kappa Hospital, which is one example of it. The waiting lists all over the country for even minor operations are growing extensively all the time. I also want to just bring one other issue into mind, that's rural Ireland. You know, for, for some parts of rural Ireland we see, that, for instance, the farm assist, which has been put back the way it was, which is welcome, and I have to acknowledge that. Also, the sheep scheme, which has come into play, which we also welcome and acknowledge that as something good and something positive. But, you know, there are so many other parts of it which didn't cost that much that could have been dealt with in this budget. For instance, the forgotten farmers, the, the older, the young farmers that are too long farming for to qualify for the schemes and have been left one side. It isn't that it would cost any money, but usually budgets are an opportunity when governments resolve these issues and come forward and try and sort things out. That wasn't done in this budget. Also in regard to broadband, you know, fibre optic broadband would be the thing that would revolutionise rural Ireland if we could get it brought in. Yet, this amount of money that is put forward in this budget for it is just absolutely measly. And there's another issue that I want to come to as well, finally. And that's in regard to, and we had them before the, the, the Agriculture Committee last week, Horse Racing Ireland has been given an additional €6 million Euros in this budget. Now that brings them to, I think, it's €66 million Euros that they've been given as an organisation. No other sector 
is given money the way they are given it. Basically, they are given €66 million Euros and turn on your heel and say, that's grand, lad, spend that how you like. And what they do is they put most of that money in to provide prize money for the very richest people in our society. Yet every other sector, for instance, the sheep grants that's going to come out now, for the person who, who applies for those grants, they have to have particular animal husbandry, they have to have particular uh, measurable outcomes that they have to do. There's none of those in outcomes for the people who are going to be in the equine industry. Yet we have people, for instance, small breeders and small people who are out there who are in the horse industry at the very bottom of it that could do with some money, that could do with a help out, but they get nothing. The people who are breeding Connemara ponies, they get nothing. The harness racers, they get nothing. But this money is ring-fenced for the very wealthiest in our society, and it is absolutely ridiculous and wrong, and it's a very bizarre way for government for to handle that particular huge amount of money. You know, I think it's something that will have to be dealt with over the next period of time, because while the appointment of the CEO of Horse Race in Ireland has been the issue, it has certainly brought to light and shine a very strong light on something which needs to be sorted out in our society. Uh, finally, I want to say that in regard to the, the services that we have in rural Ireland, what we call the blue light services, our ambulance services and our fire services, they are two areas which are in dire straits. They are stretched beyond the limits across the length and breadth of rural Ireland, and this budget did little or nothing to help them. So I think, you know, over the next 12 months, when we come back here again for another budget, I certainly hope that the two parties of the right can realise that the people out there, the ordinary people on the ground, particularly those in rural Ireland, need to be looked after, and that it isn't just about looking after those at the top who often are tech exiles in this country. Uh, I now call on